Welcome back to Cannabis Talk 101 Blue. Joe Grande, and let me tell you, you have something to say, don't I you? I do. I wanted you to know, and everybody out there, turn your typical into something special. Now, when it comes to infused products, the flavor you taste should be just as enjoyable as the feeling you experience. So visit the website at loranoils.com. That's L-O-R-A-N-N-O-I-L-S.com. Now, we're here with Adam. Yes. Adam says he meets his partner at the age of 24. His partner's 20, and they start this company by the name of MedMen. Adam, how does that even come to you meet him and say, what? Lead me to the words, Medmen, come out of your mouth. Man. Let's get, how does that even, because Big I shit. can't wait to tell you what I've been saying about Medmen. And this is what's great, is you're going to hear it because I've been saying it from jump when I've been on this show, I've right? Been saying, and he's been saying right. it too. We've had other people say the other things, so that's why I can't wait to tell you what I think about the company and everything else. But walk me through, you meet this guy at the age of 24, he's 20, how did it go down? I think it's one of these stories where you have all the circumstances line up, right? So um, between the ages of, uh, for me, like 24 and 30, right? I have this five, six year period with Andrew where we just evolve uh, into a situation where, um, you know, I'm invited in or I'm asked to go in uh, to meet a woman who runs uh, medical marijuana uh, dispensary up on Sunset Boulevard. Uh, and this is 2019, right? So, you know, we have this experience, Andrew and I, building stuff together, marketing. What was branding. that woman's name? What was the name of what? The woman that invited you the, to her dispensary. Uh, the name of the dispensary was Sunset Super Shop. Okay. Okay. On Sunset Boulevard. Okay. Uh, so, you know, Andrew and I go through all this experience together, you know, working together, trying to hustle and, you know, make a few dollars here or there. And this woman calls and uh, she invites me in and says she wants to hire us to do marketing for her to help her store. Um, and I'm just, you know, naive. Uh, and I haven't smoked weed really since I was in eighth grade at this point in time. Um, you know, I'm cool. straight and, you know, unhealthy and everything else that comes with that. Just trying to, you know, make enough money to pay for an apartment, really. Uh -huh. um, and she tells me how much you know money she's making off the store and how many customers are coming in and I'm in the store, you know, so you can't, it's not like I have this palatial place that's very special out in, you know, a fantasy island. No, no, no like it's just a shithole in Sunset Boulevard, but you know, busy. and uh, she's doing big numbers and I'm struggling to pay rent, you know, and she's asking me for help. So that's really like. To get bigger. She wants to get bigger. Yeah. Right. So that's really that moment for me, right? That's the moment in this story where, you know, all this, all this history of me being an entrepreneur, you know, figuring things out, getting exposed, building, you know, uh, relationships, you know, learning, being successful and failing, all those things. Um, and then also watching the online uh, poker boom that happened uh, just a few years earlier. I'm sure. in a spot where I'm meeting this woman and I'm like, you know, it's like, oh. You know, um, this is this is what you know. This is all lined up for, and so that's in 2019. Um, you say, when does MedMen start? You know, the first MedMen store is not not until we have the West Hollywood store called MedMen, which I think is like 2015, something like that. Um, so you've got five years. But the building. Of uh, uh, a lot of stores not called MedMen. <laughs> oh, really? Is that yeah, what happened? Yeah. So walk us through. I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know you guys had a bunch of stores yeah. that weren't MedMen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so, so then, what was the first store? That's what I was about to say. These other stores, they weren't MedMen. They were stores that were open, like the ladies' store, and then that you, you helped open, run and you, and you helped no. your market. That no. you didn't get no, any. No. Well, let's go. Let them go. No, we never worked for the lady. Uh, so you guys decided to do it on your own. So we did it on our own. We opened our first store uh, uh, in Marina Del Rey called the Treehouse. That was uh, 2010. Um, and we sold that store, and then we opened a couple stores down here in OC, a Santa Ana store, a Garden Grove store. Uh, we went back up to LA, a downtown store. Um, we helped with a North Hollywood store, another Hollywood store. We did a bunch of stores around. Seven, like eight, ten, maybe all, a handful? All couple? different names. Just kept doing them, All yeah. different All stuff. dispensaries? Yeah. All retail. Set one up, sell it, go. Uh, you know, and then, yeah, at a certain point, people were paying us to set them up for people because we were just, you know, we, we were hitting it. Had the game. I was doing that, too, for a while. So, I mean, I was very much part of that same movement. So I know exactly where you're coming from, right? That that was like, you know, I you know, I, I couldn't tell you the exact time, but it was I had one in Woodier, one in Santa Fe Springs, Woodier. You know, I was popping one up on, you know, Imperial, and they would shut down or they'd stay for this long. And then, you know, you, you were putting them up in different parts of the city and real, realizing you were either getting away with it or you weren't. You were under some kind of a, you know, doing Prop business as a yeah. proposition, you know, two fifteen doing business as a mutual business. benefit, <laughs> big, biz, as a mutual benefit organization and whatever, you know. But yeah, I, I know exactly what area you're talking about. So continue. Sorry. Yeah, no, we we were doing that, and and you know, when we started doing that, it really was 
you know, to, to, to have enough money to pay for a Prius lease and to rent a yeah. one bedroom apartment. Right. I mean, right. it was really about basic needs. It really, you know, honestly was not about anything to do with a passion for the plant or a belief in changing the future. And it was nothing. It was like, I have no way to pay rent. Yeah. Um, and this, to make this, some money, might, folks. this might be it. Right. So, you know, just being, I think so many people in this space, especially, you know, at the time where, you know, we were the tip of the spear and I was so in this, you know, so many people were so ashamed um, of being honest about any of that. One, mm. why they got into it in the first place. Oh, it's because I believe it's like, I was around when, you know, when, when it was all about you making the extra hundred bucks, you yeah. know, on, on each unit. Now you're pretending like you have a calling. Now, if you do have a calling and you've evolved there, admit it. That's amazing, right? That's what happened to me is I evolved for it to become a calling, but it most certainly didn't start that way. So my, mine started the same way. Very greedy. Right. I, and I, I can relate so well with it because I, you know, for me, it was like the only time it became a calling was because it was protection. Right? And then all of a sudden it did really become a calling because my dad ended up dying years later. But, but. In the beginning, same exact feel. Money grab. You know, like you're too young to even know. You're just in the loop and you're just going. It's and funny how you guys have that. Remember? I, 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 I told, and that's, but then the, I, but the find, that spiritual side, and I didn't even find mine until even meeting these guys and seeing what cannabis does. So I'm like three years away from, I start smoking at six, but seeing the benefit and me feeling like, no, this plant has real medicinal. Like I'm on this kick, hardcore but that wasn't until, what, three years ago? Yeah, 10, and I've been sober 23 years. In, years. 10 years into the game. You know what game. I'm saying? Like, I'm 23 years sober going, it's been against me what I, my beliefs. And I had to, like, readjust my what I've been stamped to believe to be like, oh, no, I got I to gotta take out that AANA thought that I've been put in my head. And I, I'm seeing things differently now, folks. I'm, yeah, and, and I do. Yeah. So my point is, I see what mine was. We know what blues are. What was your spiritual mine was awakening? Mine aligns with you on that. But so but, how did that happen? Well, well, maybe he doesn't have one. No, he does. He says he has one. Maybe not. He does. That's what happened. That's how he created MedMen. Listen to the guy that has my social security number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just said maybe not. I no, just, he, said I go. I, he said it because he had one. And then, yeah, yeah, so you know, I did. It. I did. So, I did, yeah, I did. so you so, have to have one. So we can go back to how it went from the stores to, you know, being called MedMen in a sec if you want. But yeah, this, the, 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 that moment was definitely the Canna Moms in Florida. That was really, uh, the Canna Moms. I love it. Yeah, that was, like, that was like, that was like, and I'm, ba I'm bad with dates. Um, that's probably because I'm a huge stoner now, right? Because I'm a better person now. <laughs> that means the dates suck, but hopefully I'm a better person. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, I think I'm going to guess 2014-ish. Sure. Um, you know, I'm in Florida and I'm, I'm speaking at a conference. Uh, and afterwards, this spunky, audacious woman grabs me and says, you know, we want to talk to you. And I'm like, okay. So she brings me to a table and it's a bunch of these spunky, audacious moms. Um, I think they were all single moms, M maybe not all of them, but I think they were. And they told me their stories, right, about their kids and about accessing cannabis and about, you know, the fact that they were traveling to Colorado to wait uh, for the Stanley Brothers, Charlotte's Web, and that one of them had done it. It took a year. They used their life savings, and it wasn't effective mm. for their child. And it's like, well, no, duh, because there's no one size fits all. I can't just take a pill from the pharmacy and say it, it solves all ailments, right? Yeah. Um, but that's what was going on at the time. I remember Sanjay Gupta put out, you know, the weed documentary, and everybody was on this CBD, you know, Charlotte's Web kick. And so... These moms grabbed me and told me their story and said they have kids that are, you know, essentially, you know, either comatose or they have gervets and they're having a thousand seizures a day. One of them had some horrible, horrible brain tumor that, you know, mm. St. Jude's had said was inoperable and, you know, would all this stuff. Um, and their only chance was cannabis. And these women were willing to give up everything and go break the law and travel course, across the country to children. save their, fuck their kids. Yeah, anything for them. And they told me the story and they said, look, we've been talking, you know, I, 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 whatever it was a year ago, they said, you know, we had a promise from uh, Steve D'Angelo up at Harborside that he was going to help us out. We haven't heard back. Um, can you help us? And I went outside and I called uh, one of our partners in Nevada at the time when we were applying for a lot of licenses out there And I said I know we're gonna be successful, but my life just changed and as we are successful We have to make sure that we at least help these women and their kids and you know I'm getting goosebumps saying about it, but like that was my moment, right? And so we end up bringing them out uh, I am I can say that I have a ton of respect for Andrew D'Angelo who you should have on the show yeah. at some point well, Call um, him up. Let him know. We'd love yeah. to have him on. He's uh, you know shout out to you know, one of the true pioneers that has brought this industry to where it is today. Well, Harborside and Oakland, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the largest dispenser in the Bay Area. It's ridiculous. It's been killing it out there. And, and, and Andrew, you know, really deserves the credit for that. He really so does. He does. You know, Steve uh, legendary the face and, and the speaking and all that. But Andrew was the guy running running that, that business. So I get a hold of Andrew and we tell him what we're doing. And 
Um, he's gracious enough to offer up Harborside, and you know we figure it out, and we bring the moms and their kids out to uh, Oakland uh, for I think a couple of weeks. Wow, that's and, awesome. And uh, we had uh, we had some people in the industry that were making extracts participate, and they would show up daily, and they would they would just trial dose these kids. Wow. Um, and you think about the crazy shit we've done in our lives, like looking back, it's like, you know, like I, t today who I am, like I would be. I think too scared to do that, right? Well, but it, 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 you know, when you say that, right? Again, it goes back to that mindset of like we're we're from that industry. So, you know, in my home, cannabis was never illegal, right? So it wasn't sure. so big of a deal. Yeah. You know, but but now it's it's like you know my my son's seventeen and he's like, Dad, growing you know, his own plants. I, I want to get some weed and I'm growing my own plants and I'm like, <laughs> dude, I'm freaking out because I'm like, dude, what do you mean? Like you know, my daughter just turned like, twenty two and she wants like, weed. I'm like, Here you go. Yeah. yeah well, she's twenty two. <laughs> exactly. You know, seventeen. You know, but but I'm even going further back and saying that you know I've, I've interviewed many of children that their parents were felt like they're refugees and they're like well here's the deal you know I get a choice right now I either give my son some kind of a medicine that's causing them you know massive uh, damage to his brain or his kidneys or whatever it is every time he uses it or I can try cannabis you know, and the doctor says, you know, I can give him this, but it's going to kill him in three months. He's going to be a vegetable, but he'll have a better quality of life. Instead, I'd rather give him cannabis, right? I mean, there's levels Terrible. to it. I agreed, right? And so we, you know, the 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 part about this story that keeps me going is, you know, we have miracles happen in Oakland with these kids. You're sure. kidding me? Um, you watched the miracle. We watched the miracles happen with these kids. I and, love when the, you know. I, I can't like, imagine. It was you yeah. know heavy stuff. Oh. Um, and you know to this day, you know, we I still you know once in a while text with one of those moms, but they're always in my heart. Uh, and it's you know story. they changed they changed me, they changed my family's lives, and they I think they changed the world. Yeah. Um, because without that, you know, I started without you know the ability to have a car lease in an apartment right at that point in time without them like sure is it worth it you know maybe not but then no. it becomes a calling right uh, after that moment well no yeah and, that and, that's amazing to and, think that that's what helped change because that's a beautiful story you're helping children you're helping family which then is the trickle effect of that because now those children you helped and it's going to help so many others from that well and it, and it really inspired me to go change laws Right. Sure. And I think, you know, probably the most important thing that I did at MedMen was change laws. Um, and it what was what laws did you change? Or help change or move or what are the ones as you, you say know, that? Uh, when we got involved with uh, with changing laws, it was uh, maybe 2015. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, 2014. Okay, uh, yeah. And uh, well, maybe a little before that, and it was with Marijuana Policy Project. And, you know, we were the first company to step up and almost through shame, you know, try to, you know, saddle raver. Uh, 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 what am I looking for? Saddle. No. Just stand up and roll on a bull bullhorn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Through our Stampede. platform, right? Shame the rest of the industry to donating, you know, some of the money to changing the laws because without the laws changing, we have no industry, right? And so I always just believed that so much and that, you know, we contributed so much towards that. Um, it's part of our success. It's also part of, you know, all the expenses that MedMen went through being the first, right? You have no business unless the law says you can be there. And who's going to help pay for it to be there if not the industry? But as you know, right, at this time before MedMen, the industry didn't exist. It was a bunch of disparate people that were looking out and scared that tomorrow they were going to have to close up. Yeah. What were they going to do? Invest millions of dollars into the future? Right. And then what you have is you have, you know, Marijuana Policy Project shock the world, which is another story that's not told. And I think it's so rich what a story is. They legalize weed in Colorado, right? right. Who's talking about the fact that Colorado is the first place in the world? In the world. Let's just pause. In the world to have legal weed. And I love the story that MPP did it for like less than five million bucks. Yeah. Right? So you talk about changing the world. That happened, right? And then other places have somewhere to look to to say, look at how this can work, right? Um, and so, you know, we really fueled that with our, with our capital. Um, you know, and I can't say we changed any one particular law because, you know, people have been working on changing these laws for 40, 50, 60 years, right? This is about passing but the baton. But you supported it and you guys are about it this and is putting about money passing into it. And, the baton, yeah. man. You know, and so, yeah, we did our part in our time and I loved probably my favorite story is Ohio. If you want to get into the medical marijuana law in Ohio, I love what we, what took place for that to happen. I love that story. What but happened? There's no one law we changed, right? People, right? Community, right? This movement changed these laws. And the fact that it's hypocritical nonsense well, they came that they out. exist in the first place is what changes these laws. Well, and, and they came out, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, right? Ohio came out by like just, you know, just 
outraging. People are coming out of the woodworks, right? If I'm not mistaken, they were on the streets, right? Like protesting on the streets for, over this. So you want to talk about Ohio? It's well, a I mean, good one. It's a great story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Story. My family's from Ohio, right? All right let's so, do it. Yeah. I know you mentioned yeah. that. All right, so Ohio's one of my favorite stories. So, um, you know, I am I am uh, uh, friendly at this point in time. Have been introduced to uh, business people in Ohio that are pro cannabis, and I'm also built this very strong relationship with Marijuana Policy Project. You know, trying to figure out what states to target, and they're using me to go help them raise money in certain markets and to help bridge business with, you know, advocacy. Um, uh, and so in Ohio, uh, a group of people get together and they spend about 20 or $25 million. And I'm, again, bad with dates, maybe 2014, 13, sure, somewhere whatever, there, yeah. Right? They spent 20, 25 million bucks and they wrote a constitutional amendment to legalize medical and recreational marijuana at the same time. Um, and the only people that were going to get the licenses, they were predetermined by parcels of land that were written in to the law. So it says, like, we're going to issue this many grow licenses, and these are the addresses that, that are going to have them. That, that will have them. And <laughs> you know, Which that's my license. That's my address. <laughs> Hold on. So obviously, <laughs> you know, these in this this group that got put together, they bought this all the land, they wrote this stuff, and they and then got, benefited from it because it's their land. I'm well, sure they got, they got crushed, right? Exactly. It didn't work. Yeah. So this whole time, kind of hokey dokey. Yeah, it's like how the fuck are you gonna put? <laughs> You're saying that? Yeah. Like, oh, hey, it's guys, only in this look. land. Who owns that land? I don't know. Cousin Larry, yeah. <laughs> like uh, Uncle Vinny. Uh, uh, Come on, dog. It, it, we, we put it in a hat and we drawed. <laughs> but, but we just guessed. We didn't know where we owned that. Ohio. We though. didn't know Wild that we had. West, bro. Why the fucking west? It still goes down like that. Like even at this moment, I. I feel like sometimes it just everything is so well, crazy. And well, shady it, like it that. does. It happens like that here, right? But you know, it's Stanton, it just, right? Like whoever's it, running it, it, the laws. They did it goals. here in Stanton. They, they, this is going to be a green zone, and all of a sudden, it's you know, it's, it's all, not because there I'm was not some, building. Well, someone got involved. You know, something got fishy. Right? I don't own my building there no more. Yeah, we all can't have it there. And if I'm on this board here, and I don't own that building there, it's yeah. not going to be okay. Yeah, <laughs> stupid. I believe it goes down that way. So, so, so they say spend all this money. They do the TV ads. They do all the hype, and they lose. And the whole time, marijuana policy project with me kind of you know paying attention is telling them they're going to lose um, for right. lots of reasons, right. um, and that for a lot less money they could win um, if they weren't so fucking greedy um, and were more realistic, right? And at the time, MPP was on a roll, right? Uh, ballot, you know, MPP invented this concept of changing laws through ballot initiatives for marijuana. We take it so for granted now, but, you know, that was a radical idea back then. Um, and so these guys took MPP's idea and they perverted it, right, for their own gain. So Rob, you know, the, MP, the head of MPP kept telling him it wasn't going to work. Obviously, it failed miserably. And we're in Las Vegas at the MJ Biz Conference that next November. Again, I don't know the date, but I promise you, whoever's listening to the people that go to that conference now, we're not talking about the same conference, okay? I love <laughs> very small, <laughs> one building, not the three building, yeah, no, not was, the whole convention center. It, it was at the Rio, right? Uh, yeah. And in uh, the VIP room upstairs. <laughs> and we, uh, so I'm with I'm with Rob, and we're walking through, and, and I see some of my contacts in Ohio, and I go, guys, we need to connect with Rob. This was right after they lost, and we sat in a restaurant that was closed at a in a booth. Um, and it was like Rob saying, look, you guys have sunk 20 plus million bucks into this, mm. you know, for four or five million dollars. I think you can legalize medical marijuana and you can do it quickly. Oh, I know exactly when this was. This was November of four of, of 15 because the elect, no. Yeah. The election was in, uh, November 16. Yes. Yeah. The no November 16 election. Um, uh, uh, and the, uh, RNC was in Ohio, was in Cleveland, uh, that was their convention that year. Gotcha. Okay. So Rob says for less than 5 million, we think we can get it done. And they say, well, you know, we don't know if we trust policy people. We need this to be commercially viable for us. And it was like, well, Adam will bridge the gap. Like we'll make sure that it's reasonable for you as business people, but it's not obnoxious. And, you know, I spent a bunch of time in Ohio and we put the money together and then we wrote the draft regs, right? And we wrote the ballot initiative balancing all the sides, right? And I was right down the middle. The business guys would say, we want this. And I would say, well, we can't get all of that. Uh, and we then, can get this. Right. And I work this. with Rob and the MPP, you know, the policy make, you know, people to say what, what'll get done. So to fast forward, um, you know, we raise the money to get the signatures. We write the language. Um, and then out of nowhere, a couple of months later, medical marijuana is legal in Ohio. Mm. Some phone call takes place. Um, there's lobbyists working for us. And then there's lobbyists, you know, working for the governor's office. And, um, and a phone call takes place. And we have medical marijuana in Ohio. And it looks like 90% of what the program, you know, the, the, the outline that we that we. Crafted. Proposed, that you proposed, yeah. And it was, it was, it That's was wonderful. the it, fastest 
in the history from no program to a program implemented. Sure. And it was a result of the fact, I believe, firmly, that they didn't want to be talking about legalizing medical marijuana while they're talking about who's going to be the next president of the United States. Which is, which is, I mean. Right? How crazy is that? Yeah, that no, where no. we come from, we were involved in presidential politics in 2016. Yeah. You know, and we used it to go ahead and make the world safer, healthier, and happier by legalizing medical marijuana. Amen Come on. to that, That's dude. a beautiful thing. And, and then now, go backwards Thanks. a little bit to how did you guys come up with then Medman? Let's take a break and come back because I yeah. want to get to that part of the story. It's Cannabis Talk 101. We'll be right back after this.